So uh, while we are predicting the genes, uh, there are two famous approaches which we use them um, in order to predict the genes from some sequences. One of them is we predict them from uh, ab initio approaches where we just uh, look into some signals present in that particular DNA and predict our genes from there. The other approach is uh, called as comparative approach. Uh, in comparative approach, uh, we compare that sequence uh, to some other sequences. Uh, we, do, we do some sequence alignments or comparisons and in this way uh, we can align uh, our sequence to some known gene sequences and if similarities are high, uh, we can ex expect that there is uh, a gene which is present. In ab initio approaches, uh, we detect genes uh, by looking for distinct patterns um, that help us define a gene. Uh, these um, ab initio approaches try to kind of uh, overestimate the gene numbers. So any segment that looks like those patterns, uh, it might uh, give him a call as a gene, but that, might, might, uh, that may not be true. So this kind of uh, issue is, ca we call it as overestimation. Uh, whereas comparative approaches, they look for genes by comparing segments of sequences uh, with the sequences of known genes. But this has an issue of uh, underfitting or we can say the issue of underestimating the genes since uh, it is limited to uh, recognize the genes by comparing to the known sequences only. So it's, uh, it's hard to find um, what is novel or what is new. Okay, so we see how the gene structure looks like and uh, what patterns we can go and find it in order to give a gene call. So a gene uh, in case of eukaryotes looks like this. So we have a promoter sequence. It's a sequence where we have some specific patterns where some proteins, we call them as DNA binding proteins, they come and attach and then they help starting this transcriptions. Uh, just recall guys, uh, transcription is the formation of RNA from DNA. Uh, whereas translation is formation of protein from that RNA. So here is the promoter in this gene and then this uh, actually this transcription starts from somewhere here. We call it as transcription site site uh, start site that is TSS. Then there is a region we call it as 5 prime UTR untranslated region. So that part goes into the RNA but it is not translated. So protein is not formed uh, from this region but still uh, this since this transcription starts from here, uh, that's why it is TSS. Translation starts from this start codon, so that is ATG. You know that uh, this uh, these uh, amino acids they are incorporated into the proteins while reading these uh, nucleotides in the shape of these triplets. We call them as triplet codons. So ATG encodes for methionines. And that is true for uh, most of the uh, of the polypeptides. There might have some few exceptions, but this is a kind of a universal thing. Then we have exon one. So you see in eukaryote, this ATG or start point is in exon one. In between there is an intron, and then we have exon two, and then we have those stop codons uh, which are here G E A. TAG, TGA. So this is how the trans, uh, translation later on it will stop with these codons. But as far as transcription is concerned, it stops here. So this stop sign for transcription. So messenger RNA will be formed from these regions, and obviously these UTRs are later on. Uh, they are they are uh, there, but they are not there in the final product. So after we get that this pre messenger RNA, we get the final messenger RNA where introns are chopped out and we get exon 1 and exon 2 joined together and this is the start codon and these are the stop codons. So in order to do the promoter prediction uh, we want to find some patterns in the promoters. Uh, in order to get a gene you need a promoter. You can predict trans this uh, TSS site. Uh, you can find the presence of ATG. Uh, you can look into those stop codons. And all these things, all these patterns, they are important in gene finding. The place where we have this start codon and till stop codon can also be called as ORF, open reading frame. So that is the place from where we will get the proteins. And these are predicted ones. Will we be getting the proteins or not? That depends. So most of the time when we are doing those ORF findings, we have so many ORFs. Some of them are right or some of them may be some false positives. Coding sequence, 
that is another term which we will use later on so coding sequence is the sequence that actually goes into your protein so that is exon 1 2 start stop go down so that whole chunk or the fragment is called as coding sequence as far as this gene finding is concerned there are some other issues so we know that in human there are 2 to 3 percent dna encodes for functional genes and genes are interspersed among long stretches of non-coding uh, regions so very few part has genes and we have uh, so much non-coding region earlier we used the term junk but still we are getting some interesting patterns out of it so don't use the word junk but still in the literature you would find the word junk dna then in case of the human DNA or eukaryotes, we observed there are a large number of repeats, so up to 40%. And then there is the great variation in the gene length, so some genes are long and some are shorter. So you cannot come up with an exact number so as far as the length is concerned. Uh, we also have to distinguish between pseudo genes and uh, uh, some genes which are arrived due to genome du uh, this gene duplications. And uh, there are some other issues that make the situation complicated, uh, like exon intron structures, uh, non consensus splice sites. We'll talk about them when we talk about splice sites. And where is the first exon? Uh, that is also an important question. Sometimes uh, we try to capture these genes while uh, taking those cDNAs. We take the messenger RNA and get their DNA copy out of it. And since that part is uh, what is expressed or that part is uh, which is coming from the genes uh, so we can get back to genes if we use that cDNA but uh, most of the time uh, we, we see the situations where uh, we have issues with cDNAs. Uh, alternative splicing and chimeric genes and alter alternative promoters they might also add complexity. So in this section uh, what we have seen here is that there are two approaches with which we can do this gene prediction. Uh, one of them is ab initio if you start from scratch or uh, you just try to get the patterns directly from that sequence. So if you are comparing with some known genes, that approach is called as comparative and gene finding is not an easy task.